speaker, I tell you that every speaker here believes in three things. Firstly, they believe that all the people who are ruling first world democracies, all the leaders, are warmongering, sadistic people who don't care about their citizens. Secondly, they believe that the people, the citizens in this first world democracies, are idiots who can't choose the government properly and have no knowledge of their government policy. And thirdly, they believe that citizens should have all their privileges, should have all their rights, without having some sense of duty, without fulfilling their duty as citizens of the first world. Now let's look at Charlotte's speech, the Prime Minister, because she basically said that war is an ugly thing, they, doesn't, they don't think that war has any benefit, and there's so much harm to the people in this war, and when people come back, the, the survivors, the families are hurt, there's emotional trauma and physical trauma. Now, we recognise that, we know that it is a harm of war, but let's really look at the situation here, because when we see, when we talk about taxpayers' money, we believe, or rather it is a fact, that it should be used for the benefit of the country. And as I said earlier, when the benefit of that country essentially arises out of war, how does it do so? Because war, and it is basically used as a last resort in this first world democracies. Because first world democracies basically are run by reasonable people who resort to things like diplomacy, negotiations, and, or, and at the very worst, sanctions. But when the country, when a specific country still remains as a threat to this first world country, then, and, and the leaders believe that war is necessary to protect its citizens, to protect the global community, we think that that taxpayer's money should pay for that benefit. And we think that the emotional trauma and the physical trauma basically is an accepted harm of the war. Because the people who participate in this volunteer armies in first world democracies, they recognize that they are protecting the country. They recognize that they are, they are protecting the global community. And we think it's an accepted harm of war. And when uh, that harm arises, what happens? Let's look at it because there is government compensation for these victims. There is government comp compensation for the MPPs, for people who retire from the army in the form of pension and stuff. And where does it come from? That money comes from that taxpayer's money who is providing for the arms forces. If you go with their policy, that compensation for existing victims would be either reduced or removed entirely. And we think that is a problem. And the hypocrites that Charlene will be talking about would instead be side government here. So we don't want to go with their policy. Charlene <laughs> talked about how it will be on their conscience and how people basically should have a right to say where their money is going. We think that that right already exists in status quo. Because if we look at the democratic process, as I analysed earlier in my, in, in my previous speech, people elect the government due to many reasons, their ability to rule and such and whatnot. And basically, the people who are running for government explain what they're going to do. And then explain what they're, how they're going to run the country. For example, the president, through uh, uh, debates, pre presidential normies through debates, they explain, hey, this is my policy for healthcare, this is my policy for, for the armed forces, this is my policy for education. And obviously, Shalini has no knowledge of this presidential debate because she thinks that people are idiots who are not informed about the policies that these people want to implement. So the citizens essentially choose how their money is spent. And if the ruling government or whatever spends the money any other way, the people would then choose a new leader when the time is right. We saw that with, with George Bush. Of course, he was an idiot and, and did a lot of mistakes, but of course, it changed with Obama. And we see that the democratic process works. Status quo essentially is fine. Now, right, sir. but before I go on, yes, sir. Yeah, what about Sarah Payne? When you almost elected her to become the vice president, as no, you know no, that no, she no, can't no, lead no. the country. Almost, she almost, almost electing a stupid woman is not electing her. <laughs> okay, basically, we have responsible leaders right now, Obama, who would effectively who will probably lead, not only the US, but the global community at large to, to a new stage. And we think that is a good thing because that is what we believe in, the power of democracy. Now, if you look at the extension coming out from there, basically I mentioned earlier of how Thailand really does not have any place in debate. And we don't think that improving education or, or, uh, or, or improving healthcare really is such a very big issue compared to security here. I mean, it is a, it is a problem. But when you have countries who are such already who are such in debt and are already fighting wars, if you were to cut at least a bit of their funding off, we think that will have problems for 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 that country as well. Because especially if you look at countries who are, like the UN who are trillions of dollars in debt. We think that that is an issue if you are channeling it into different 
uh, areas. Points. Yes, but before I go there. Exactly a point whereby when you are in debt, you shouldn't pour more money into war efforts, but you should rather reduce your debt. Okay, the thing is, we are streamlining the the money, the taxpayers' money. But if you are going to be reducing a portion which is going to an essential part where it is where basically security, as I mentioned earlier, is an essential part of any first world democracy, we think that is an issue in itself. Now, Charlie mentioned about how uh, the people basically are not exposed to every single pol uh, uh, every single policy. Now, firstly, what you are doing is you are assuming that everyone in the first world are idiots who do not have any knowledge, prior knowledge of the, the government's policies. They are assuming that the leaders are idiots. Of course, okay, George Bush was one. But even so, even if the people aren't exposed to, to that uh, to every single thing that the government may or may not do, we don't think that that really isn't such a big problem because that system of checks and balances already exists with that democratic process. And we think that bilateral ties, as uh, some new point that, that Shalini brought up, we think that that really isn't against such an issue because first of all, democracies aren't more wandering who just go around um, invading countries because they're not happy with them. Basically, they are concerned with diplomacy, they are concerned with maintaining good ties already. So we don't think that funding their, uh, funding their armed forces really is an issue because especially when we fund their armed forces, we are ensuring peace in the country. We are ensuring not only peace in the country, but peace in the global community at large, which is what I mentioned in my extension. Because firstly, it is the civil duty of citizens to not only protect uh, to, to provide funding to protect their country but protect the global community because if we look at first world democracies when, they are, when their army is part of other military organizations which are so essential to the whole peace of, that, or, or, of the nation because with privileges that these citizens enjoy clean water, good government, good education system comes that duty and that duty is to provide and to pay their taxes where it is due and that is why this motion cannot stand.